Good afternoon on today's Angry Bulletin. Talis Selenia has unveiled what NASA intends to use as the first ever Mars base camp for the Artemis mission. But the question is, with Lunar Starship and its massive internal volume, why the hell do you need a tiny little base like this? All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon, and once again, welcome to The Angry Astronaut. So, very excited about the prospect of covering the launch of Vulcan Centaur. Thanks to you guys, it is now possible. Not only raised the money that I needed, actually raised a bit more than that. And as a result, I was able to secure a little bit more equipment to make the broadcast even better. So excited about all of this and none of it would have been possible without your generous support. Thank you so very much for making all of that happen. And for those of you who made contributions, if you are not a member of my Discord server, please email me and just uh, let me know the donation that you made and, and when you made it, etc. So I can make sure that you get that Discord membership as a reward for what you did. I know that's not what you were looking for, but nevertheless, want to make sure that you folks are adequately compensated. And and once again, if you guys want to support my channel and my endeavors in the future so I don't have to do these last second fundraisings, the best way to do that is to join Patreon and supporting my channel that way. But once again, you guys made it all possible. Looking forward to bringing you guys an incredible launch on Christmas Eve. All right, let's move on to other items and specifically... The moon base. Back in 2021, a Franco-Italian company called Talis Elenia, a lot of you probably are familiar with them, they've done a lot of the modules for the International Space Station. They're also designing modules for the Axiom Space Station coming up soon. Really, when it comes to space station modules, these guys are the experts. Well, they won a contract to do a feas feasibility study on a variety of different designs for moon bases. Well, finally, a few days ago, they announced that they had come up with a winning design. And here it is. Really? I mean, think about this for a moment. We've got Starship, right? Lunar Starship with a colossal fairing, a huge amount of habitable volume, way more than this thing. What, are they planning to bring a dog along or something? They need a doghouse? What is the purpose for this surface facility when you have such a massive amount of habitable space inside Starship? I mean, it's not like you're going to be able to leave any astronauts behind inside this base while you make your way back up to orbit with Starship because Starship can't come back. It doesn't have enough fuel to make a second trip. It has to go all the way back to low Earth orbit in order to get refueled because it runs off of methalox and there's no in situ methane or very little anyway on the moon. So what purpose does this thing actually serve? When it comes right down to it, it demonstrates the enormous disconnect that still exists between the different organizations who are trying to make Artemis possible. When Talis Elenia set about doing their feasibility study, even back in 2021, when they knew that Lunar Starship was going to be at least one of the HLS solutions, they were still operating under the assumption that a landing craft was going to be just that big enough to take the astronauts down to the surface and that's about it so that they were going to need at least a modest amount of habitable space for the astronauts when they arrived. But that is no longer the case. So the question is, what purpose does this damn thing serve? Well, actually, it has a lot of utilities, a lot of things that this little base could actually be used for to give the astronauts a lot more flexibility, a lot more freedom of operation on the lunar surface than Lunar Starship is going to offer, especially if we're talking about the Lunar South Pole. 
Many aspects of the Artemis project, including habitation modules for the Lunar Gateway and even for the lunar surface, have been in process way before an HLS selection was actually made. And it's pretty obvious that neither NASA nor ESA had the slightest idea that something as colossal as Lunar Starship was going to be selected until it actually happened. Now, what you're watching right now was the deployment of the HALO module from Northrop Grumman, although Talis Alenia is involved in this project as well, which is going to be the first habitable module for the Lunar Gateway. The thing is tiny because it's based off of the Cygnus resupply ship from Northrop Grumman. Really, I don't see what sort of practical purpose this thing is going to serve, given the fact that Lunar Starship is so much bigger, aside from the fact that it's going to provide a tiny space for a couple of astronauts who are unlucky enough to remain in orbit while the rest of the crew makes its way down to the lunar surface. And even with the addition of the IHAB module from Talos Selenia, the habitable volume of this station is not going to be a whole lot bigger. Indeed, this thing is so small that astronauts are not going to be able to pass one another without disrupting their work. Now, although the Talos Selenia a moon base is probably going to be different than I have. In many ways, it's going to be very similar in my opinion as well. The reason for this is Talis Selenia designed I have with the assumption that it was going to need a Falcon Heavy to carry it. That is to say, it needs to be small enough to fit inside the fairing of a Falcon Heavy because we can't be certain that Starship is going to be able to do the job. Once again, even though Starship is the anointed HLS provider, it's not the only HLS provider and it could run into some significant snags on its way to the moon. You may have seen a recent talk given by an experienced engineer, somebody who knows a lot more about this topic than I do, and he pointed out how many launches it may actually require to get Starship out to the moon with a human crew in tow. And it's actually a great big question mark right now, which is unacceptable given the short amount of time that remains between now and Artemis 3. If it's going to take 8 launches of Starship, we need to know. If it's going to take 16 launches of Starship, we need to know. And all of this needs to be officially made part of Starship's overall plans. Oh yeah, and he's also pointing out how many successful missions to the moon were actually carried out by Apollo as opposed to how many launches it's going to take to send one mission to the moon. Now I'm not going to start harping on about how NASA made a bad decision when it comes to Lunar Starship as an HLS solution, but we do need to look at the possibility that it could take some time before Starship is an practical solution for putting things on the surface of the moon, whether it be people or cargo. Oh yeah, it's also kind of gratifying to see an engineer actually agreeing with something that I've been saying for the last couple of years about Lunar Starship, but all of that having been said, Talos Alenia and anybody else who's planning to put something on the moon needs to take this into account. It may not be Starship doing the job, it may be a substantially smaller rocket. There are other considerations when it comes to Starship as well. It's a very big ship. Really, when it comes down to it, so is the Blue Moon from Blue Origin. Now, why is that a problem? Well, it's the nature of the Lunar South Pole. It's not like the other places where the Apollo missions set down. They are not flat planes. They are not the ideal place to be trying to set down, especially with a really big top-heavy ship. Indeed, Blue Moon is actually probably going to be worse than Starship because it carries all of its propellant and oxidizer at the top of the ship and the crew are underneath. To give you an idea of what I'm talking about, have a look at this location on the rim of Shackleton Crater. This crater is double the depth of the Grand Canyon, and just getting up to this location is going to be a difficult endeavor as well, because the entire region 
is extremely rugged and difficult terrain. It's going to be challenging to find a landing location in the first place, and then if you want to travel to other areas that you want to get to, most importantly, regions that have lunar ice available, it's either going to require a substantial hike or a substantial drive with a lunar rover. What's my point? Well, the Talus Alenia base is going to prove to be an ideal base camp. In other words, you land Lunar Starship wherever you can reasonably land it. May not be the best location from a practical standpoint, but you set down and then you're going to have to venture to a better region, a region that's better scientifically, a region that's better as far as resources, lunar ice, etc. are concerned, and then you're going to have to set up another habitation unit. And that's where the Talus Alenia base comes in. Now, how do you get a Talus Alenia a module all the way out to a more remote region of the lunar surface? Well, the European Space Agency has a solution for that as well. They have something called the European Large Logistics Lander from Airbus. This is a much more squat and also a smaller lander designed to deploy a substantial amount of payload on the lunar surface in a wider variety of locations. Because it's small and because it's squat, it has the capability of landing and deploying rover cargo, etc., or a small lunar base in a wider variety of locations at the lunar south pole, which means your astronauts sat down in Lunar Starship, they venture to a region that needs to be explored, studied, or perhaps mining equipment set up there, or whatever, and they will have a ready-made base waiting for them. This, in my opinion, is the most practical solution, the most practical utility for the Talus Alenia base. It's not going to serve as the primary habitation unit for Artemis astronauts, but rather a regional base, bases for exploration camps, that sort of thing. In my opinion, that's the best utility for this solution. It's not the original purpose. I really think that Talus Alenia, even now, thinks that they're building the primary base camp for Artemis, but really it's not going to serve any sort of practical purpose as a primary base camp if you already have Lunar Starship with a thousand cubic meters of habitable space, but it will still serve lots of useful purposes. Oh yeah, another detail. The large logistics lander is also capable of delivering several tons of supplies to astronauts in the field so they don't even have to go back to Lunar Starship to resupply if they're engaged in some sort of sustained and lengthy mission out perhaps at the edge of Shackleton Crater or even deep inside Shackleton Crater. Oh yeah, Shackleton Crater may not be the best place to set down with a ship though because it's cloaked in eternal shadow and a pretty damn scary place to try to set down if you can't see anything. Yeah, LiDAR provides some solutions, but setting down totally blind, never a great idea. So let's take one real quick look at the IHAB interior to get an idea of what this base might look like on the inside. Now this looks kind of spacious, but actually to make it fit inside Falcon Heavy's fairing, they had to make it a little smaller than that. We're only talking about 23 cubic meters worth of habitable volume here. The blue area represents the systems, computers, scientific equipment, etc. The aquamarine stands for hygiene, toilet, shower, that sort of thing. Oh yeah, and by the way, the toilet on the IHAB is in the ceiling a part of the module probably not gonna work on the moon where you do have some gravity here's the galley area barely enough space for four astronauts to sit down and have a meal together but that's not something that's gonna come up with the early Artemis missions where you only have two astronauts on the surface at a given time still a pretty damn cramped area oh yeah sleeping accommodations this is how it would work in orbit Bit. However, on the moon, it might be a little bit different and also a bit problematic because bunks are going to have a hard time fitting inside this thing. Perhaps putting bunks 
flush against the walls or something might work out a little bit better. It's probably going to differ from IHAB in some ways, but I just wanted to show you the interior of IHAB to give you an idea of just how cramped this habitation unit is probably going to be. However, over time, it's going to get bigger and bigger because everything that Talis Alenia does is modular. You're going to be able to add on another module and another and another to make the base substantially bigger. So these cramped quarters are going to be a temporary thing and a necessary thing. I hope I've made that clear at this point. Starship is just not flexible enough to land in many regions on the lunar surface. And also, we can't rely on Starship to deploy everything either. Every time you send Starship to the moon, it's going to require at least 12 or 13 flights or 15. It's hard to say exactly how many, but it's going to take a lot of launches of the biggest rocket in human history. You're only going to want to do that for mission critical applications. If you're talking about resupply and other things, that might be better suited to a rocket like Falcon Heavy, maybe an Ariane 6 once that becomes a little bit more reusable in the future. What I'm saying is, yes, there is an application for a little base like this, and there are applications in the Artemis program for smaller rockets, rockets from a wide variety of nations. And that's a good thing, actually. You don't want to depend too much on one type of rocket or on any one company or on any one solution. Not if you want to go to the moon to stay. Thank you very much for watching. Once again, thank you so much for your support in making my future journey to Cape Canaveral to cover the Vulcan Centaur launch a reality. Please like and please subscribe. It's so important to the future of this channel. And as always, stay angry about space.